back, everybody. We're back. Um, so I started watching season 35, 36 of uh, Survivor. Which one is the one where they introduced Ghost Island? Ghost Island. The one before the last one that happened. So I don't remember. I don't know what number they're on. I think 35, but I don't know. But it's not the latest one. I don't believe. Is Ghost Island the one that no, has... No, yeah, it's not the latest one. Ghost Island is the one that more. has a lot of the uh, rewards from previous... Or not rewards, yes. but something from previous seasons. Right. Or whatever. How far into it are you? Uh, not far. Right. I'm like three or four episodes. Like, they, uh, the part where I'm at... Um, like, they do the merge on day three or some shit. Like, or not merge, yeah. but the swap. It's... <laughs> Yeah. Very that that was a very weird season, and I will tell you as as you're coming up to it, there's it becomes way too much with the bringing back things from. Well, it felt seasons. like that already. Like yeah. everyone in the goddamn game's got immunity idol mm. at this point. It feels like like if there's just that, immunity idols that, everywhere, that people are finding them in the middle of the night. That carries on throughout the entire season, and like some idols will come back as this one was the most powerful immunity idol, but it has lost some of its power, so now it's only a normal idol. Like that's. That's the wow. the essence of it. And then at one point, if I recall, just all of a sudden nobody goes to Ghost Island anymore for like three huh. or four episodes, and then all of a sudden they're back on Ghost Island again. And you're like, what? Wait, so wait, there's that like, this that existed? guy from Kentucky. Um, you know what I'm talking guy. about the the guy from Kentucky. Um, uh, yeah, I think I do know the guy you're talking about. Uh, he looks. Do you ever? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think how to describe him, but you you tell me, and I, I think we'll be fine. Well, do you ever watch Saturday Night Live? Yes. So the woman that plays like Nancy Pelosi, she plays she plays a lot of people in the cold opening. She plays um uh God, um what's the little elf on the shelf man that Trump just got rid of? Elf on the shelf. Man. I can't um, his name. Yeah, I know I uh, um oh fuck, what is his name? He didn't just Kate get rid McMahon of him. is apparently her actual name. I never would have known that. I don't know anyone's name. But the but, the guy the guy from very early in the the Trump presidency that got uh his old pre- press secretary. No, 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 not him. Um, the guy that uh, Jeff yeah, Jeff Sessions, Jeff Sessions, the guy that oh, accused oh, you're himself right. and okay. then he got recently got fired. Um, yeah, yeah, she plays him. She plays a lot of a lot of people. Anyways, the guy from I, I'm not convinced that that's not her. Like playing the guy from Kentucky. <laughs> like he looks so much like her, or she looks. I don't know. Anyways, um, that's my whole takeaway from regarding him. He's probably, I, don't, I don't think he's going to last for long. They want to get rid of him, like, day one. and uh, I don't know. He seems like just the sweetest little boy that just never left Kentucky. So, I mean, I'll be excited when you're through that and through the next season. I guess and since I'm not watching it anymore, I can't really talk about it too much. So, I think the next season just started or is about to start. Yeah, apparently they're in Antarctica. What? I'm going to have to watch this. I, I did not know that that was the case. Maybe it's the next season then. There, there's some season coming up where they're in Antarctica and like they've been doing like Super Bowl. I was probably gonna see it during the Super Bowl, like Super Bowl ads about the craziest thing Survivor's ever done. I know I didn't um, see a single Survivor episode or uh, ad during the Super Bowl. Did you see that our good friend OMG Chat's gonna be on Survivor? No. <laughs> uh, are you are, are, is, are you lying to me again? Well, kinda. He auditioned. <laughs> So he went to a live audition yeah. recently. Okay, and um, so th- th- he can't talk about it. I oh. tried to get him to talk to me about it. So it's possible. It's possible. So you never know. Like that'd be that'd be yeah. cool. Would it? How would you feel? I would. I, I mean, I would feel like I would want to. I want to be in his place, but him being there didn't stop me from going. <laughs> like this, right? So I, 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 I would be the. There. I wouldn't be mad, but I would be probably for the first time in my life extremely jealous of one of my friends. I would like, be. For the I, first I, time, I would, oh, I would feel jealousy oh, absolutely. that would encroach would on like how I felt about my friend in a in a bad way. I I wouldn't. I would be just greed with it, green with envy. Oh, I will. I will also be very jealous, but I would never like like he's sadly he's the type of person that they would they are going to try to cast over somebody like me anyway. He's got a personality. Yeah. He's got a look. He's got a thing that I don't have. Right. You know, so, and, and I in no way think that, like, if, if he gets on, it's not, it, it didn't change my chances of getting on at all. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. 
So I, I just will have bad. a hard time being friends with him still without being so damn jealous. Uh, I don't know I how I'll be, go I would on. Be also, yeah, I would also be extremely jealous. That is, there's no question about that. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll be jealous. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, well, do you ever look for the live auditions? I didn't know they actually did them until uh, Chad went to the live audition, and I, I looked no, it up online. It, and the only done one it for years, I'd never knew that. I'd only done the damn tapes, stupid VHS tapes. Oh, like, yeah. Apparently, you ain't got to do that anymore. At least, at least I, now I think they pr- they pretty much live tape. auditions are the the main way you're like getting on the show. Um, if really? you're getting on the show from from anything anymore, uh, so I always look for the live. Uh, granted, I haven't looked in a long time. I should. Lo- I used to look every couple weeks to see if there's any in the DC area because I figured DC area is going to be big. Never seen one in the DC area, uh, but I would definitely try to go to a live audition if I got the opportunity to. Well, I feel so. like I, I want to like start like keeping track of it and just flying around the damn nation wherever they're at. And go to all of them. Yeah, that can be our job just keep for the next going. year. Yeah, just keep fucking going until I get I get in the show. <laughs> what I got to right. do. I mean, I, I guess it's possible that you could do that. Um, I mean, have you looked and seen where people did at? that for? Uh, well, the only one that was on their page was the one that that, that Chad went to. There was no more listed. Where uh, was it in? Like uh, it was in Texas. Okay, it was nowhere near near us. Because I've seen it before. No. Like when I I used to look when I used to like religiously like try to. Oh, I just dropped off all my food. Um, I'm going I used to try to make way. videos every year and get like excited about making videos, and I only ended up submitting videos like twice, and they were always very I'm so subpar quality of what I submit for how much footage I would start gathering throughout the year to make my audition tape. I right, could never right. put together a good video, and the one well, they reason- got to be so short. Yeah, they, the and they, ha- they have to be so one short minute, right? And three minutes, so it's uh, long minutes, enough to right. make a good video, but the it can only be like 30 megs. Yeah, that too. You got to compress the shit out of it. So I have a feeling that none of them even got looked at, even if they, I thought they were good because they were not like you open right. the thing up and it's like shitty ass quality or whatever. What are you going to do? You're not going to watch it. You're coming to sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't get food. You heard me. Um, yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, the the only time I I did not do what you did. I mailed in VHS tapes, and once they stopped doing it that way, I had, I have not ever, I have not applied since there were v, since it was a VHS. I, tape. We we should somehow find a way to apply as a quote unquote couple, like not like the you know yeah wait like there's got to be the the friends versions versus couple versions, right? That would be a good one. They haven't. I don't think they've done anything like that. No, I don't think so either. Yet. Yeah. But they should just do like because they've done the family ones, the friends ones, or the couples ones. I mean, I don't remember but, the last time they did a group one. Period. How long ago was that? It's been a while. It's been since some of the. I think that's when the survivors brought their families. Right. Like previous survivors right. brought families on. Right. Which has been quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember the last time something like that was done. Um, speaking of these type of shows, have you finished Alone? Did you watch all of them? Uh, no, so I haven't gotten a chance to start watching Alone. I was going to ask you, or to start watching the next season. I saw the first season. So, yes, I saw that so one. So, that's all you've seen this first season. How about Traveler? I will tell you that if you were going to like the last season, um, uh, that's all. How many <laughs> seasons are there? We there in? are five. Five. Total. Okay. And I just finished the fifth season. And it's good. And uh, it's real good. Um, and I think the reason why it's so good is it's an all star season. Um, oh, so it's a bring people back season, and they they're alone again too. I was gonna be so disappointed if season five came out and they were in pairs again. Uh, season five is alone once again. By the title of the damn show, how about um, travelers? Yes, yeah, thought it got canceled. I still haven't watched because I started watching Survivor, but I haven't watched season three. Did you did you think that it was gonna be carried on after watching season three? Um, I did not know. They, I will tell you this without spoiling things because I know you haven't seen it yet. If it had to end, they ended it in a very good way. Um, That's good. They, so it, it ends with kind of like you could make it a finality. You could have also made it like extend on, but you you ended it with a finality that you can kind of go okay, understand end of season. I just wish they had done exactly what Travelers ended with in like. The, the if season three was season five and they made it like a five season run mm. type of deal like add more filler in the middle 
and then like end end it with how they ended it at the end of uh like a, a later season and that would have been like okay fulfilling series great like runtime done gotcha. i think it was a fulfilling series with way too short of a runtime is what it is turning out to be since it got canceled hmm. that's too bad i saw that it got a lot of backlash on like uh uh like not social media per se, but a lot of news articles about it was on the list of the Netflix series that got canceled like prematurely or before their time or whatever. Apparently there's a, a shit ton of them um, that people are, you know, upset about it being canceled. Huh? Mm -hmm. So needless to say, you will enjoy it, but that's good. Yeah. I'm still going to get around to, you know, I was thinking about that whenever I watched like the main guy, the main actor, you know, put out a video on Twitter talking about, you know, we've got, got the news today that it's canceled or whatever. And thanks everyone that watched. And, and he said something like, you know, and, and always it'll continue to be available for you on Netflix. And I was, I started thinking about that. You're like, Is Netflix that true? originals, like what's their shelf life? Cause Netflix does drop shows. But normally, you know, if they drop The Office, it's, you know, it's available. You can get The Office at Best Buy. What about these Netflix originals? What what happens? I mean, oh, do they just go too... away eventually? Or will, or do they sell the rights to it to somebody else to put up? Or mm -hmm. will they ever take these shows and put them on, like, network TV? Will they sell them to a network TV syndicate? That wouldn't even make sense, but maybe... God, though, can you imagine if the model came out, like, inverse model of what Netflix started as? Netflix started making shows and selling them to run as reruns on like tbs that would be pretty wild wouldn't it that would be insane that would be the whole opposite model of what it was for but i, I know mean, they don't currently drop their show c4 but they might at some point yeah i guess that's it, it, yeah because if you're not going to run them anymore if you started seeing a loss of if you only started seeing like you know let's say a thousand people viewed this a month What's the, right. is it worth your bandwidth as a Netflix, as a corporation trying to get new videos and stuff out there to keep that on your servers? Or is it try to sell it for profit to somebody else? Do they sell, do you know, do they sell like, can you go into the store and buy Orange is the New Black? I don't know. Yeah, I've never actually looked into that. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. That is, that is interesting to think about. I will tell you when we were just in the hospital. Um, did you know? So you probably you've been to a bunch of hotels and stuff. You ever had hotels that lock out their HDMI ports? Yeah, that's bullshit, isn't it? So it's bullshit, and you can usually get around it. There's a lot of forums and stuff out there on different like codes to m change the hotel mode option of a TV. Don't understand why the hotels do that. Well, I guess I do because they have their little pay-per-view boxes. They'd rather you not bring like a, a stick or whatever. So same problem at my hospital. We couldn't use the HDMI port because we were going to like stream some Netflix. Right. Turns So I looked up the TV. Turns out. I didn't know anything about this before. The TVs that we have are specific commercial grade TVs with a hospital mode. Not a what? hotel mode, but a hospital mode that's even more secure and hard to break through than the hotel mode ones. What the fuck is that a thing? I don't know. But they involve, like, most of the ones that I saw that had hotel mode, you could, like, get the remote and dial a certain code on it and do a certain key combination right. to get into the menus. The hospital mode ones are all based on creating a, a slave USB stick off of the master TV that does all the configuration. And then you plug it into the USB diagnostic port and it programs it and there's no way to change it uh, unless you... You know, have the a, a hold of the master TV or the master controller remote that will let you program a new USB stick to program the TV. Holy shit! So there was no way around that. Then. Nope, could not get around it, and I, we just gave up and threw a lot. They were small. Like I was kind of sad at my own hospital for having such small TVs in the patient rooms. We just threw a laptop <laughs> up anyway. <laughs> watched yeah, yeah I was like, say, that's when you bring out the laptop. Yeah, yeah I was just watching on the laptop is what we what we did. But I had never realized that there was a hospital specific tvs yeah that's that's pretty wild 
And what is the hospital TVs gaining from? TVs more secure from than that? your damn medical records. Well, yeah. What's the hospital gaining from that? Yeah, that's so not, weird. The hospital's not selling me DVDs. The hospital's not selling <laughs> right. me movies. Like, let me watch whatever the fuck I want to watch at the hospital. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. Hotels, I get. They're trying to make a profit of their, right. you know, DVDs or, or uh, excuse me, their pay-per-views. You know, they want me to watch, like, the Debbie Does Dallas again. You know, I've already seen it. I already know what she does, but they want me to see her. I mean, maybe there, since maybe there's so many joint rooms, they're worried about, like, people being subjected to things that they don't want to, and it's just easier to lock it all down. I mean, I, I guess that's possible. That could be a rationale for it, but I have no idea. Now I'm going to try to get, like, friendly with some people in our, like, facilities department and try to find out what it all how it all works. And now I'm just curious. Like, how does it work? Well, like, if, as an average concern, consumer, there's got to be a way that I can actually hack this thing. And how is that done? You know? Right. Huh. I had no idea. Yeah. Weird. I would have assumed, like, because you got these people just stuck in their damn beds. You want them to be able to watch whatever. Yeah, one just... would think. Uh, we learn, I learned a lot about hospital. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be hated when I go back to my job. I wrote a few emails to some higher-up people, very high-up people at my organization about some of my experience that I had when I was there. And a lot of <laughs> a lot of it, not like, not even important things. And I even tried to make that clear. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm nitpicking, though I kind of sound like I am, but... One of the things I could not believe happened is finally when we got food, uh, like my wife got food. I didn't get food because I, I, I'm not the patient. She is. You know, they put her on, you know, clear liquid diet or whatever, even though she could eat just fine because they want to advance the diet and all this stuff. Um, oh, by the way, if you, if you didn't know, she labored for 40 hours and then we had to have a C-section at the end. Jesus of yeah. Christ. I So, so I, I hadn't heard from you in a while. Yeah, and I was I, like, I, I wonder that I what's, what's yeah. going on. Like, was, I wonder if he's if things are good. Oh, no, we, so we, I probably texted you because yeah, I was like, I hope everything's all right. Yeah, no, we had a, we had a pretty rough stay uh, just because it was, you know, 40 hours of labor and then the C-section. Whereas last time we went in with a schedule, c-section because uh jack was breach so right. we went in and within two hours of going in for our appointment i had a baby in my hands because you know it was scheduled this was right. we went in one night to get induced and 40 hours later we started the process of a c-section so that it was absurd it was a whole different ball game but uh was she awake that whole time yeah yeah some oh my good God. some bad she ended up getting an epidural like 36 hours into it or because it was you know the, the induction hormones uh, or the induction medications they give you make you contract like even worse than uh standard vaginal birth because yeah, you're yeah. basically forcing your body to do this and at one point it just got so much that and she wasn't dilating enough that she had to take the uh the epidural otherwise she the uh, I can't say she had to. She requested it finally because otherwise she couldn't have handled the contractions that were going on. They would have to lower the induction medication amount, and therefore it would have gone nowhere. So wow. to do it, she took the epidural, and that was the first time. So after like 36 hours, the first time either of us got sleep because she was in you know so much pain before that, and then she was able to So sleep. how long after the water breaks is it no longer with, safe to not do a C-section? They have to do it within 24 hours or it's – it's not it's unsafe for a C-section. It's for the fetus, and it's within That's 24 thought, hours yeah. um, of the water breaking. They have to have the basically the baby out um, if it's an induced labor, and it was 18 for us. Though the, they monitor the fetal um, heart rate and all that stuff the whole time, so there right. was never a question but the baby, like our I baby, was said like blood alcohol level, but I meant blood oxygen yes. level. Yep, it was blood alcohol <laughs> level. It was fine. No, his all his uh, the baby was tolerating extremely well the entire time. Like never a question that the baby was in any danger um, at all, or they probably would have pulled it before. But because also because right. of her age, she's thirty nine years old. She's not you know you know your young twenty so much. She was that old. Yeah, yeah she's about I to hit forty. She was younger than me. Yep. No, she's about she's about to hit forty, and that's the thing is like she's literally there's a lot of random cutoffs at forty um, in the medical world. And granted, you know, cutoffs are diamonds. arbitrary. Sorry, <laughs> maybe we he's at a low level shit. though. Um, cutoffs yeah, are like arbitrary. Like the, you, once you hit turn forty, nothing changes immediately because you turn forty. It's just you know uh, around that time frame. And when you're thirty nine, you're around that time frame. Um, uh, but. God, what the hell? Where, where the hell was I going with this in the first place? I, we weren't talking about. We we're talking. Oh, the oh, so 
finally, after, you know, because she had a suit. surgery, they made her originally get a uh, clear liquid diet. Even though we got to our room late, so the only diet she had that night was a clear liquid diet. And they wouldn't advance her diet until she could tolerate a clear liquid diet, despite having drank, like, 85 juices and all this water and being completely fine. It was like, I have to have to follow the protocol, so you won't get solid food till the morning. So I went out and got dinner for myself and got her something as well that she I was about ate, ate to say, us, you brought some food, us. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we ate. It was, it was not a problem like that. We ate, but... But but before we were able to eat, um, they had tried to bring us like one of the nurses tried to get us something late to because it was clear liquid diet, nothing until the morning. So she kind of snuck in like a, a sandwich that was there. I don't know if she snuck it in. An actual tray did come up. Literally, all it had on it was a turkey sandwich. Mm. The turkey sandwich was a hamburger bun with some turkey oh, God. and literally a single small spinach leaf of lettuce sitting on top. <laughs> and I was like, that's fucking ridiculous. I was like, take a picture of that and send it to me because I, I, I need to do something about this because that's not what a patient, like mm. we're trying to get patient satisfaction in our hospital. Like we have low patient satisfaction scores and we're trying to do all these things to increase patient satisfaction. But when you present somebody with that, how do you expect to increase patient satisfaction? Right, like that's right. just like fire festival, ridiculous. the pregnancy. Like, right. So the <laughs> next day, they come in and they say, okay, and I got the, the meal. The nutrition people come in and say, this is our menu for, like, you know, lunch. What do you want? Like, these are the things you get to choose from. So Julia chooses all this stuff. They come in <coughs> with a little thing that's circled of everything that she's chosen. And half the things, I can't say half the things, like two of the things just weren't even there. So That's happening every time my grandma goes to the hospital. I'm in the bed, but I don't know if you yeah. can't sleep or not. But, um, but yeah, every time I, I, I'll like go th with my grandma to, and to order the, her food for her, and then when it comes, I'm like, this isn't the shit we circled. Why do we even bother circling shit? Right, right. So I thought, I was like, that's like fucked up. And the very last day we were there, she orders all this stuff, and it was like, um, the last thing was a vanilla ice cream, because it was the dessert option that you can get with things. And it shows right on the papers, vanilla ice cream is circled, and sitting right on the paper is orange sherbet. Sherb sherb and I was like, what the fuck is this? So I took a picture of that one, too, and I wrote this long email to our person who runs the nutrition services, and I was like, look. I was like, we're sitting here trying to, you know, we have a brand new catering company. We're trying to increase our patient satisfaction scores. One of the very few things patients have, like, choices over in their hospital stay is in relation to their food. And then you don't even honor the choices that you give them. Like, how do you think right. that this is affecting people and the patients? We need to get ahead of this. Why the fuck? Like, if you can't fulfill what the patient said, you need to tell them in some way. Don't just give them whatever the fuck you feel like giving them. Or give them a turkey sandwich with a single, like, spinach, like, leaf piece of lettuce. Doesn't even make sense. How do you, like, right. we need to do something here. People need to take pride in what they do. All this does is make you look at it and think that people here don't care and don't pay attention. And... When you're dealing with your health, even though you're talking about the food, it doesn't matter. That concept is going to carry over to if this is how you deal with my food, how do you really deal with my medical well-being? Right. Yeah. You don't give a shit about this. What do you give a fuck right. about? Right. So, <laughs> I, I mean, hopefully they care more about the medical stuff than the food. But I, yeah, yeah, One would hope. And, and I know, like, the people at my hospital very much care. And I've met, met some of the nutrition people who are very much are all about patient safety. So I know this is kind of like a flu. I can't say it's a fluke. But I know that people care and that but we just need a better quality assurance process. Like, right. maybe people just messed up. Like, the one that things were missing, they might have just gotten forgotten. Okay, that's great. The things that got screwed up, maybe somebody accidentally, we were a random tray that got the wrong ice cream on it because mistakes happen. I get that. But this is the experience that we have. Like, we got to get in front of this if we want to increase patient satisfaction at all. And I feel like an asshole because it's like, I work here, but I wrote to emails to very much higher ups and it was like, look. <laughs> have you got a response at all? I didn't even look yet. Because I haven't checked my email since then. Because that was the very <laughs> last day we were in the hospital. I wrote that email. I actually wrote a few. I actually made some significantly good changes. I actually have a new process for one of the fetal heart rate monitors that 
didn't realize it even existed in our hospital. And the nurses, it ran into a problem. The nurses didn't know how to troubleshoot and didn't have a process for troubleshooting because it was a product that not many people knew existed. So I've already got a new process for troubleshooting that thing and where to escalate issues to because it actually happened to us. We put this wireless fetal heart rate monitor on. It was fantastic. It was great. Julie could get out of bed because otherwise they try to make you lay in bed and not move because these things move around you on the straps that they give you. And they would rather you just sit there and get a good reading on the monitor than be comfortable. All of a sudden we get this wireless monitor in there because we asked for it. Worked great. The second battery we tried to put in didn't work. The machine stopped connecting and no longer could like associate with the module. Said, what do you guys well, do? What's who, who do you guys need to call? We don't know. <laughs> we have problems with these things all the time. Nobody supports them. We don't know who to call when they break, and so we can't use it anymore. Boom. That's wow. been taken that's been taken care of because nobody knew that that was a problem. <laughs> I just happened to be there and realized that, you know, experienced the fact that it was a problem. So now there's a whole support system around those wireless fetal heart rate monitors because I escalated the fact that it's a problem when our people who use these don't know how to escalate an issue with them. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's nobody's fault. There was just no written But you would think after it came up so many times, people would be like, you know, what the fuck? We need to figure this shit out. Yeah, one would think, but it just doesn't always work that way. Well, it's just so It takes you getting to the right person to get things done and i happen to be the right person for that one because i knew the right people to contact to get a process in place wow <laughs> you need to get uh, i guess you need to have some other things go wrong or well, not wrong but you need to go you need to go to your well, hospital as a patient and, more often well and, and that is and that is why i will say straight up as an informaticist who deals with trying to be the liaison between the nurses and like the it people for things a lot of things that we put into place or whatever, if you are somebody who's been out of the field for too long, you don't know the impact you're having on the end user because things look good on paper. It doesn't translate into reality. And if you don't right. use it in reality, you don't know. And I'm a firm believer that people need to be, like work the bedside if you're going to support the bedside, you need to still work the bedside or at least be in close communication and contact. It's, with it's the kind of surprising. You guys don't require a certain I, number of hours I've, a year. I wish people did require that. And unfortunately they don't, which means I, it's hard for me to do it myself. And I know I kind of sound like a hypocrite because I have to work X number of hours and get X number of things. And I don't have time to go work the bedside anymore. I think they should make us do like a 12 hour shift a month on the floor. Yeah. And just be, you are a nurse. Go be a nurse and know what the fuck you're supporting. People would complain. All I right. did my time. Yeah. There, there a lot of people move to places like clinical informatics because they're sick of the bedside. They don't want to deal with patients anymore. That's not the way right. it should work. Or, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well. I would say that we have we have completed our our day. We have completed our day. <laughs> uh, congrats to you and your new your new addition. Well, thank you. Um, all right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. See you.